Mm-hmm. When you think about uh, DIB, it's not about just showing up and saying, you know, I was there and the fact I was there, that is enough. Mm-hmm. But it's more about understanding, have you put in the work? And even as you're putting in the work, what is your contribution? Why do you need to be a diverse team? Based on the contribution, the teams that will be bringing. If you think about any football team, each and every person has their skill set. So based on your skill, then you'll be recognized because you'd be seen for the efforts you're putting in, but rather not necessarily just because you're a different gender or because you you talk a different language. I always like saying that diversity, as everybody tries to simplify, yes, can be a fruit salad, but not everybody loves fruit salads. So what works in your organization, implement it, but implement it in a baby step. People pros and welcome to the People Champion Podcast by Elevate HR. This is the sixth episode of our new segment, which we call the People Companies Impact Stories, where we feature exceptional people leaders doing impactful work. Our guest today is very, very special to me. She has left such an indelible mark in the lives of HR professionals and especially women. She has over 15 years of experience in HR. She's a thought leader in the space. She is a talent optimization consultant and a DIB change catalyst. Now, listen to this. She is the lead HR consultant at IHR Solutions and the founder of Women in HR Kenya, a learning community with over 1,500 HR professionals in Kenya and Tanzania. She was voted one of the leaders in the power list of the top 200 biggest voices in leadership to watch for in 2022 and is recognized as one of the 11 inspiring women HR leaders in Kenya by people Ham Dorcas. Yes. Karibu Sana, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the set today. Thank you. I really love, I think when you hear someone else introducing yourself, you're thinking, oh yeah, so, so I did that. Hmm. Yes, okay, you did. So <laughs> I, I need to figure out how to change that and do more. Yeah, but happy yes. to be here. But you deserve all the flowers that we are Thank showering you. you with. So 15 years in the game, what has yes. been your proudest moment? Uh, so, so I have two great proud moments, I would say. And one of them is actually in my early years into my career. And, you know, HR, we're all known for it's time to hire, it's time to fire, or just to review someone's performance. And then I was working in Centurion System. I think the amazing thing I got to learn was to be given an opportunity first to build up teams, but also an opportunity to leverage on the skill set that I had learned for a Mm. few years. And one of the key things I really focused on was building talent. And in HR, yes, you get that chance, but sometimes there's no bandwidth so you see potential you you're determined to mentor the person but the person doesn't have the interest so while i was there i was able to mentor someone and the significant thing i would say is they were able to grow their career from an entry level to a point where they were a manager and I just like working with figures because I think when, when you hear figures, yes. you feel the shake. Please give us the data. So, so the person started with 35,000 uh-huh. salary wow. over like two years, two years and a half. That moved to 350. Yay! Wow! Well. 350, of course, <laughs> is a lot of hard work. Wow. It was not like a, a, just a walk in the path. Yeah. But one of the things I really loved about it was there was an opportunity for me to give somebody feedback Mm -hmm. but the most important thing somebody accepting their feedback and working on it um we they they were a team of salespeople, and therefore one of the most critical thing was performance and performance was revenue generation Mm. so it was well outlined and each and every aspect that we were identifying as an improvement area was being addressed Another significant time was in hospitality. Now, hospitality tends to be one of the industries that actually hires quite a number in Kenya, around 70%, um, entry level especially. And um, I got a chance to run a project. This is like back way before COVID. And the project was actually on two fronts. One, to train managers 
and this was huge for me so you know you're told these are first line managers you need to figure out how to get a great trainer first uh, if everybody knows you don't get a budget but you're told to do it so creativity has to check in and i decided to collaborate and that word actually reminds me of something someone said today most important thing is to collaborate mm-hmm. for you to remember your purpose so i reached out to someone in linkedin i've never met the person and really? i was like this is my first time i'm doing a training for first line managers and i really need them to understand what it's going to be to be a first line manager and how they'll deliver and how they'll carry out themselves so he came on board um I'm sure you know him he's Stuart in LinkedIn. Oh, yes. Wow. So it's a big deal when you reach out to somebody That's a who's big deal. you know and he was in the country so we set up the training but the most amazing thing is the team that was actually trained by Stuart flourished flourished in a way that I was able to look back and say it's good I took a chance on them and we were able to build them all the skills that they doubted they had but they had it in them being given an opportunity to grow and develop themselves so that was really an amazing moment and then a final one is I I really love giving back so during covid I got a chance to support it was around more than 100 people just to revise their CVs talk to them advise them we were doing it with a team and it was just a random post somebody posted and they were like who is looking for a job and because i don't have a job to give you i'd rather look at your documents and see how we can support you and during my maternity leave that's what i was doing you really? know wow. counting time trying to figure out how this world would be and it was great just getting feedback and somebody saying you know when i went to an interview i was able to present my papers and i was successful to get a role so yeah that was good talk about meaningful impact yes. i think that's what i'm talking in small about. ways <laughs> small ways little yes. grand things little yeah. grand gestures i call them yeah. that um so when we talking to our community members asking them who they want to see on the podcast yes. your name came up a lot and it's especially, mm-hmm. especially women they said that you had such an impact with the community that you've started women in HR congratulations on Thank the good you. work so i know you're very passionate about diversity equity inclusion and belonging you're a dip change catalyst so i'd like us to talk a little bit about that and to start us off what would you say to the people who claim that a focus on DIB initiatives leads to tokenism and reverse diversif- reverse discrimination so yes. you'll find that people are getting hired not because they qualify yes. but just because diversity what what do you have to say to that um so i would first take it back a little bit into how we we run our our education setups mm-hmm. in Kenya we all know as you start school there'll always be some form of competition and i think that's why we had to interchange some of these things so the essence of why it's seen as its tokenism is because we say creating these appreciation certifications recognition for attendance <laughs> and i don't yeah. know where it came from but it has reached that point of even if i was late i showed up and that counts it counts uh, mm-hmm. when you think about uh, DIB it's not about just showing up and saying you know I was there and the fact I was there that is enough but it's more about understanding have you put in the work and even as you're putting in the work what is your contribution mm. so the tokenism tends to be seen especially in a work setting where people are rallying behind a policy a policy that is being pushed for either by a board level or management level but they haven't understood what the policy and the purpose of it is when you think about diversity and um, I like how I was in a space and somebody said you know that's the face of Kenya that organization brings that and I asked what do you mean and they were like well you can see almost the representation of all tribes all together to eat and I ca- I caught into the conversation and I was thinking about diversity and out there everybody's just thinking you know it's a gender card mm. are we at 50/50 or yeah. are we scaling off at a different place you are able to actually remove the tokenism when you understand the purpose as to why you're building into it why do you need to be a diverse team based on the contribution the teams that will be bringing 
if you think about any football team each and every person has their skill set so based on your skill then you'll be recognized because you'd be seen for the efforts you're putting in but rather not necessarily just because you're a different gender or because you you talk a different language i always like saying that diversity as everybody tries to simplify yes can be a fruit salad but not everybody loves fruit salads so what works in your organization implement it but implement it in a baby step how do you reverse the tokenism from not being seen by actually having a proper performance management system mm-hmm. if you have a performance management system that works tokenism would be removed if you have simple policies that are well understood you'd actually arrive in being an organization that is able to promote DIB um it may not be at all fronts 100% but it's a working progress by itself mm. yes yeah but i think you've brought out uh, good points the performance management system policies I, i i like that what would you so there's a debate that has been going around yeah. uh, whether people should focus on equality or equity when it comes to the dib initiatives yes. what do you think is more effective so um i'll take you on a, ch- a tangent on this um i would say where is the business what's the business strategy and where are they at when you go to an organization that is just starting up um for instance just a startup and depending on what they are focusing on or working on they would find themselves thinking about let's just do equality in a way that everything just balances and everyone is hard but when you flip the coin and you go to a very much organization equity becomes most critical one because it's not just about saying we need to hear out everyone and giving giving them the right tool it is what is required for each person and at what level same thing as you do budgets in any organization not all budgets would match up but somebody will be like hey you're giving 10 million to this person uh department why can't we also get the same and then <laughs> let us decide yeah but then where's the organization and what are their priorities so i will say that one get it right on your business strategy align it to your people strategy because once you align it to your people strategy you'll be able to decide on what areas and what fronts are we going to put at but i would really stick on fast equity mm. because equity enables each person at their own level to actually do very well mm. and sometimes that's where things go wrong and people say then does it mean uh, we won't have equal salaries or are, are you telling us we shouldn't have fair salaries and then you go like what are you contributing is it equal to the other person and the essence of this or the ask is to make you like ponder into I'm here for this time I may not earn as equal as this person or build up to what they are but my contribution will be worth it based on what I'm contributing to the people strategy so equity but I know so many people will be like I I don't agree but it all depends on where you are and the time you are in yes. I like your point of view um now that you've brought up salaries I know pay equity is a key aspect yes. when you're talking about DIB. Yes. So how can we ensure that compensation is at least fair? So what is your compensation philosophy in essence? Uh one transparency by just having simple I I think this is where you see the government has got any right. Mm. They have transparency on their salaries. You have your structures in place, you have your skills and levels and you know as you come. And funny enough, mm. you'll never hear somebody arguing and saying, you know what, for this front I'm being, you know, I'm being yeah. paid badly. Mm. But when you think in the private sector, one or two reasons why we may not have the transparency aspect however if you have a salary structure now the mistake people do is people try to match up to someone else's salary structure yeah. they'll be like um you know what we're in hr we're in consultancy same as elevate elevate is paying these why can't we be like that but the budgets for elevate and the revenue being generated by elevate becomes very different as opposed to the other so i always say if you have a fast proper pay structure any person who's joining your organization will actually be in acceptance 
because they will see the transparency that it's not that I'm going to have a conversation with boss during performance and just get a salary hike but there will be a policy in place problem is most organizations start they make the money then they realize now they need a salary structure mm-hmm. and therefore they have to review most of the roles yeah yeah i think most people who argue about like being like equity when it comes yes. to salaries you'd find that maybe you're doing the same job same job and then you'll find somebody else yes is earning more than more you. than you and yes. you're doing the same work yes <laughs> what would you say to like fast speak yeah just I evaluate the that. the jobs honestly mm, if mm. you don't evaluate because i know what what tends to happen and and this we are crushed on as hr mm. is when you're doing interviews and you have two resumes in front of you um a study was done by Harvard where they interchanged the names for a male and a female and the male guy had gaps and uh it was because it was a female lady who had gone on maternity leave and the the lady had mm. no gaps but had not been working for a while mm. and the thought process there was which candidate would you pick if the the male uh, candidate mentions they were away taking care of their parent and they have just resumed work because of family responsibility while the other person says they've just been tarmacking a majority of the people picked the male cv no because way. it was a male guy being represented in terms of name should be howard and something mm. and the other person was not picked because they were like i mean what was she doing she, she should have been creative so the aspects of pay come fast from bias when you start doing the actual job rollout mm. people come and say you know what this person seems to be deserving uh they have the potential there's certain words you'll actually hear being repeated and you unknowingly don't know you're either being unconsciously biased or you in, you you are aware and you're being biased and therefore i always insist where you see there is actually an issue on pay and you know 100% the person is actually earning more than you for the same equal to equal same environment you'd rather contest it and i know sometimes people would say no i don't want to fight people you're not contesting it for yourself no 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 it's not actually about you it's about the person who will get that role after you leave because you're just trying to set a record straight in correcting either a mistake that was done intentionally or a mistake mm-hmm. by itself so i know it's a work in progress I know right now because of sustainability people are sharing actually their reports in Kenya it is improving which is significantly great mm-hmm. because then you're also coming out and saying you know what we have not been getting it right in our pay and we are working on improving it however i always feel that's like a box that can be sorted within one or two financial years considering that it's a mistake that keeps making the environment in any organization was Yes. Mm. That's such a wake up call to us to address the unconscious bias that we all have because we all have yes. unconscious bias. Yes, yes. So um, let's talk about the B in yes. DIB belonging. How can organizations go about creating a culture where people feel like they belong? Okay, so I'll tell you for sure one of the interesting things that people avoid or say it's not important to do is a culture audit. Um and a culture audit can also be referred to as an equity audit because you're trying to understand what has been working and where are the disruptions being built up and for you to be able to actually make a whole team and uh, let's pick big numbers you know 10,000 people feel as if they belong it means you have to have the intentionality to grow your organization you're not really fast thinking about the one individual you're thinking about the overall one and one of the few examples i always try and give somebody is when you come up with an adjustment even a simple leave policy and you say you know what i'll give pili ah, five leave extra days off the mm, books yeah i always say can you just multiply that with 10000 and if yeah. the answer is no mm. that's where you know is a disruption and that's how certain cultures tend to be built up. So one of the few things uh I've always done when I'm involved in any culture change is creating a focus group from the actual employees oh, yeah? and giving them an audience. However, including an external person because again, we just talked about uh biasness. Mm. If I'm going to be your HR and I say this is a safe space. I'm sorry, Pili. My mind 
will trigger certain behaviors in our next performance discussion mm. because of what you mentioned in the safe space. So in order for you to get it right, you segregate yourself, get somebody else to be able to get the feedback. And most people nowadays either do the employee survey uh, and they'll track their NPS and it's measurable. Uh, boards that work best and follow and track on this actually are able to measure their culture with it. So it's not about, oh, we got some random feedback. No, what is the expected NPS on mm. this? And then all the feedback that is gotten, just create simple objectives and then translate them to KPIs for all department heads. Because the person who sits at the top would be able to translate the change they want by leading it. Then the people who are at an individual level with teams will be able to translate the same because they're leading their team. So that even up to a cleaner, they should be able to come out and say, you know what, we are an organization that has an open door policy. And therefore it means whether or not I have made an appointment maybe with my supervisor, I'm able to go and excuse myself and just have a short discussion with them without feeling that I have to struggle for those small things. And I know people would say, well, that's so small. But then flip the chart and think about if this person really needs an urgent assistance in terms of an approval, either because of a family uh, need and they need time out. That open door policy would be a game changer because you are immediately addressing their urgent need. It may not be seen urgent to you as a supervisor, but it's their urgent need. And that cleaner will be able to appreciate the time you've given them because people forget you're not in the organization only to make money for the organization. Your internal customers are your employees and team members. Oh, I love that. Culture <laughs> creeps in in a different way. Yeah. But when it's led by the leaders at the top, it makes it perfect. As everyone says, the fish rots from the head. That's true. I think after yes. this, I'm going to submit a proposal that <laughs> we should do a culture <laughs> audit. I'm telling you. <laughs> Would you say that diversity also is not just limited to, you know, the like what we know, gender, race, but also like a diversity of thought, opinions and perspectives. If so, how mm -hmm. can we incorporate more of that? Because I think that's also an interesting aspect to look at. Yes. So one of the interesting things about DIB is we sort of mirror it differently um, as you move from each corner of this world. So one of the interesting aspects when you're thinking about even a skill set or just somebody who is very different, first thing people always think about is the 50-50 uh, gender rule. Uh, and then they scale off into, you know, which stereotype are you in, in mm -hmm. terms of are you gay or what. But scaling into why we go to work, you'll discover that the most interesting creatives uh, tend to fall at a certain uh, cuddle which people tend to shy away from. So uh, people who are uh, HDD or basically anyone who has a slightly mental disorder that you'd assume would not be a cooperative member in your team would be a high contributor if they are put in their right setting. So creatives tend to be a good part. I, I have worked with creatives. I think the first time I was working with creatives, I had a hard time because they were like, I don't like working during the day. So they check in at almost 11. Yeah. You go home, you leave the person there and mm. they're like, I did a whole night, mm. but I delivered. And you're like, there's something off. You're the one who's not managing your time well. And... I think after a while, having worked with them for six months, I came to understand there's a way their mindset has been created. So also appreciating that not everybody would do the eight to five. Mm. And actually in Women HR, we did this analysis, mm -hmm. did a poll and we, we were laughing because one of the poll was, when are you most productive? And the timings were either two to five, uh, seven to eight five. PM. Oh, PM. PM. And yes, like when would you prefer to be in the office? Mm. Majority were between 10 to 6 and then 2 to around 7. We had a small scale that was fitting in into what we call normal. Wow. So we're like, wait. So next thing were, 
what are you now doing to get into this curve ball because you already know when you're most productive mm-hmm. and actually most people agree that if they're working on payroll and numbers and everything they mm-hmm. don't want to work on the numbers mm-hmm. in the morning they just want it to be done at night why because then you're escaping into that space no one will disturb you and somebody else would be like this is when i'm resting you know watching netflix or something else so the mix tends to come from personality first so you do a test uh you do a communication test also and then a final one to just bring back properly is create a culture fit that works for you so if at all for instance in elevate everybody's preference is to work from 10 mm. but people are delivering then make that work Mm. However, oh. if you have a high a high team working at 10, then you get an administrative team that works from 7, no there would be a clash if they don't understand each other because then the issue here is why are you coming late or what are, what what are you doing in in the morning, you know? So that small disruption tends to be very difficult to be understood if you don't know the people you're dealing with. Yeah. But it's like a, it's a different aspect over there. I think for me, I yes. am most productive from 4 a.m. to to 9. Now you see. I'm a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> But I really love organizations that focus on output as yes. opposed to monitoring how many hours like where are you? Yes. So, yeah. uh, I remember there is somebody at hosted some time back. She's called Ginanga. And Gina was like Um, why do you need to go to your office if you can you know be productive from where you are and it's more about self discipline and uh, proper communication so the issue is depending on the time you're good at get that environment that works for you mm. sometimes um, people get it wrong by getting a job that actually doesn't connect to it and they keep complaining and saying that they they really don't love the job but reality check is you applied for it Yes. Yep, you did. <laughs> so, you know, decide. You signed the contract. You signed the contract, yeah. Okay. So, as we draw to a close, um, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges and opportunities mm-hmm. in the DI, DIB space? Um, let me say first challenges. There are enough communities I know who are trying to create an awareness. And awareness, not that people are not fully aware of what it is, but a proper understanding of from where you are and making it more relatable uh right now i know a lot of people are trying to create data within a kenyan context just to bring it home and make people understand and therefore the biggest challenge is acceptance there's a lot of the waste that is being brought in that is not the core of the ib so how do we reverse that and make you understand what the ib is Again, there are a lot of things we are already doing right. How do we bring it out for you to understand what you're doing right so that you even appreciate and you know pat yourself on the back that you have made progress on it. In terms of opportunities, yes, I would actually go back to our education system. I feel um, with CBC in place, it will be a great opportunity for DIB to play out. There is a sense of belonging right now. We are not, you know, there's a time, I don't know if you believe you, so when results were being announced for KCP, mm-hmm. you'd like crunch your fingers because you're not sure who is going to, which county will have a suicide case. Oh, really? Yes. As a parent, I, those are things I follow because I, now I have a Form 1. Mm-hmm. So you there's nothing like that i've not had it for a while mm. and yes we know we have had other experiences where people have taken their lives however it has not been on that transition from primary school to high school there has been a lot of issues on that and not saying that that is on, only the opportunity but thinking about the ib on where it should start is make that child understand they belong to be in that class mm. then they'll be able to actually advance and improve on their skill set and they will be part of the diverse team that we want if you want doctors engineers and the whole blend that we want however when you come in and you're not inclusive in a way where you appreciate everyone's opinion then we limit ourselves i mean again education system 
we have body we have day and we have the in betweens it's diverse by itself you know mm. we're doing something however now building all that and bringing it to the workplace as everyone says dependent on either the university you go to somebody will assume this is a person with the right character i think it just depends on how you are brought up that's how it will build on your character because dib will only make an organization shine if they give people the opportunity to actually be themselves and be themselves is if i work well with pink hair mm. pili allow me <laughs> i just have for me i have this weird thing i yeah. just like nails mm. you know and they're like mm, girl wanna- how do you type <laughs> like try me <laughs> you okay. know okay. and and therefore what makes me happy i know of an organization in pika they have pets they have dogs golden really? retrievers so, you so when you're not your... feeling well, well, well the dog just comes <laughs> and tap and we're like we're moving there <laughs> and i realize it's not the only so a lot of people in the community women hr came out and like yeah we have different pets and they have enabled us to feel good when we're in those low moments and all that so w- what are we trying to do um ensure that dib creates the environment that works for you but also enables you to bring out the best in you in terms of your capability we should not limit ourselves because we have not written a policy and said this is a diversity policy no you should be encouraged that if you do an actual audit on dib you'll discover you have things that you're already working on that are perfectly great and may not require to be changed and then there are things that are great to think about and see how you can incorporate i think one of the lasting things i can finish off in day b in terms of opportunities is think about it as an adventure of the greatest place you want to go you imagine all the things you want to do you know the trips the rides whether it's swimming whether it's on land this something you're doing and that opportunity and desire to go there becomes your desire for you to introduce DIB let it be that adventure you seek for yeah well wow, i'm a sucker for good analogies and <laughs> i really like that so it's essentially creating an environment where people are free yes to be themselves and an environment that nurtures people to bring out the best Correct. okay i love that so last question yes the personal one okay. i want to know What leadership legacy do you want to leave behind? Oh, that's a tough one. I feel I'm 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 yet even to to build or do certain things, but one of the few things I'm looking out for is to change the HR narrative of Kenya. And what do I mean about that? First creating safe spaces. Um I get hurt or I I feel sad when I hear about um uh, sexual harassment case that goes under the carpet yet there was a hr profession that was there i feel sad when i hear somebody missed an opportunity because somebody didn't take you know 10 minutes to mentor someone and i mean the list can go on but how do we change hr by ensuring we don't disrupt so much and my legacy would be change yourself and i'm starting with myself ensuring that i create that opportunity that safe space if at all somebody has done a mistake admit to it go to court yes but admit to it correct it because i feel sometimes we we make one mistake and then we build up and it becomes a mountain so for me safe working spaces let mothers get pregnant without <laughs> being worried you know but be supportive to that employee and make sure that business is growing because if there's no business we we don't have a job yes wow what a mm. wonderful legacy thank, thank you. you so much for all the work that you're doing for women in africa and for being a part of our community your contributions are you know spectacular so asante thank sana thank you and thank you for and having me you're welcome and remember if you're watching if you're looking for a payroll partner Elevate HR is your plug and if you want to outsource your entire HR function call us as well sign up on the link on the demo below and then our team will be in touch with you otherwise till next time bye